everybody or afternoon or evening well it's good morning in Amsterdam it's a kind of grayish day but hopefully the weather will get better if not the light is inside ah yes yeah, so uh, what are we talking about today I wanted to talk about lineage and how sometimes people get too caught up in lineage <laughs> so we are so lineage orientated in the modern kind of way of Reiki and for me that is a big 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 obstacle so you know we try to say oh man i have the shortest lineage i have the purest lineage i have the clearest lineage but we can for whatever we have known study with mikasui if we don't practice that lineage means nothing and what is also really important is that nowadays when we talk about lineage a lot of people say oh this lineage teaches exactly this, 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 and this. But here's the tricky part. According to Hiroshi Doi and other researchers, Miku Sui taught his student depending on their spiritual development. So what it means is that like any very good traditional teacher or a spiritual teacher, that they teach a person according to their spiritual development. So some people just need to do hands-on healing first. Other people can go maybe straight into a mantra. Some people are more visual, some people are more auditory, some people are more kinesthetic. We all know that. And yet we stick to these lineages where it has become, no, it has to be like this. So very rigid. And in that rigidness, we don't have the flexibility and the openness to actually look at the individual. It's like everybody in that particular lineage has to do the same. And here it becomes tricky because not every person is the same. We're all different. Some people like ties, some people like spinach, some people like potatoes, some people like french fries, like me for example. Some people are vegetarians, some people are meat eaters. One is not better than the other. It's just a different way. But if we say, oh, my lineage is so like this and is very strict and doesn't give that openness for each individual to grow due to that lineage is too narrow, then it becomes very tricky to actually have a very direct experience. A very direct experience of what? A direct experience of your true self, of your great bright light. And so... Therefore, already, when we hook ourselves too much on a lineage, we get into problem. For example, I go to an acupuncturist. Not two people, if it's a good acupuncturist, is treated exactly the same way. They stick the needles somewhere differently. The needles go into the skin differently. If a person is uptight, the needles don't go in that well. If a person is really open, it's like the person almost puts a needle into milk, for example. So... Each person is different. If I go for a massage, if I go to a good massage therapist, they will treat my physical body and my energy body depending on what is happening to me. So if they do exactly the same, it becomes conveyable massage, conveyable acupuncture, or conveyable Reiki. And this is sometimes something we have to be really careful of. So in a way, the teacher is there to talk with the student, to communicate with the student, to guide the student in their own individual way. What means it is that if the lineage is not, mm, it has to be like this, but more open, you can actually tailor make your teachings according to the individual. What means the individual, like a good acupuncture or a good massage therapist, have a much quicker and directer way of experience their true nature, their true self, their inner great bright light. So I think this is really important uh, because we could go to a massage therapist, but if they don't address our issues, if they just do their own general kind of thing, then we keep going there, but nothing really happens. Yeah, we might fall asleep, we might fall relaxed, and that is okay for some, right? That is okay too. But if we want to go deeper and really experience this great bright light, then it's important to actually work with someone who can show you different elements and then, you know, really coming from you. What suits you? What 
what is really your journey. Oh, this is really pointed out in the precept, Gyo, Gyo Hakame. That be true to your way and your being. Gyo is really your pure experience, not my pure experience. So your pure experience is different than mine. I, I might have a cup of tea in the morning. Cheers. And it depends on the morning what kind of tea I have. Uh, maybe it's cold today and I drink a little ginger tea. Maybe tomorrow I feel like green tea. So therefore, it really depends. So therefore, the teacher is there not to impose their gyo, their pure experience on you. But if our lineage and we go, no, this is the lineage, this is how it needs to be, this is like this, then the teacher is imposing their gyo on you. The teacher is really there to help you to find your gyo. If you find your gyo, then your practice becomes very juicy, just like a really good violin player, right? They really discovered their way of playing the violin. That might not be my way, or it might not be the teacher's way, but that is where the juice comes in. This is where it really becomes exciting. So for me, this is a really important element that we really try as a practitioner or teacher to find our gyo and what is ultimately not stuck to a lineage. Like if we stuck to a lineage, then we become very narrow-minded. And this is why, like for example, Hiroshi Doi also states that Mikasui was teaching his student according to their spiritual development. My teacher does exactly the same. He is now willing to, in Japan, he's a priest who can actually train other priests. And his own teacher was the great Dai Ajari Sakai. The Sakai Dai Ajari, he uh, did the uh, marathon monk, the marathon, uh, he was one of the marathon monks, and he did it twice. He's one of the rare people who did it twice. So that was my teacher's uh, teacher. He was actually a deshi, so of Sakai Ajari. And, you know, so what is really wonderful to see that he's really teaching the individual. And he is now also willing to take some of the International House of Reiki students and help them to find their gyo. And, you know, we had a conversation. He said, well, <clears throat> maybe bring four people. He said, we work in a small group, but then I want to work with an individual to help them to find their way because each person is so different. One person might really like to stand under a waterfall One for one person that is not healthy to do. So, you know, we, we have to be very aware of this when we teach the system of Reiki. But when we become too strict to our lineage and say, no, it has to be like this, then very tricky. Also, some lineage, they all scream, oh, Anzen Ritsume, Anzen Ritsume, enlightenment, enlightenment, enlightenment. And I always have to laugh about it in a way because we can scream all we want about enlightenment, but if we don't take the boat and if we don't start rowing and if we don't check the boat, if there is a hole in it, and if we don't know how to row, then we can talk and jump up and down all about Anzen Ritsume and enlightenment, but if we never reach the other shore, then what is the use of it? So most important really in any kind of tradition and lineage is to practice and practice with the aid of the teacher. And in that way, we have to trust the teacher. It sounds a bit strange and sometimes difficult, but in that way, it's true. I have to treat to trust my teacher that is helping me to find my gyo and that it will takes me deeper and deeper and deeper. And if he says, Franz, you have to practice this and that I go home and actually apply it. If I don't apply it, then it's a waste of his time. It's a waste of my time. It's very simple like that. So sometimes nowadays in modern systems, the teacher says something and says, no, we know better. We go and do something different. We're going to make it all different. We do it differently. And that is not really how it works either. So we have to be very aware of how this system, the system of Reiki in a way really works and we, how we apply it. And, and so for me, the most important thing is really finding a good teacher who can help you to rediscover your gyo and not imposes their gyo on you. This is an utmost important element if we want to get anywhere. It's the same with 
playing a music instrument, the same with when we want to play soccer, the same with any kind of art, the teacher has to help you to find your gyo. And if they say, no, it has to be like this, 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 this. Yes, in the beginning, fair enough, right? If the teacher and if the student is not following what the teacher is doing, then the teacher has to be very strict. But then that will bring up the student's own gyo. And then we can add different things in it. And here sometimes people then go, but is it still Reiki? Well, if we really look at Mikasui's system and how he's taught, and if we look at some of his students, then we see that he taught different people different things. For some, he added a bit of Shinto. For some, it was esoteric Buddhism. For some, it was might have been even completely esoteric Buddhism. For some, it might have been very simple. Just put your hand here and go la di da di da. That might have also happened. And they're all correct. But if we say, oh, but this doesn't belong to the system of Reiki, and if that particular exercise would actually be the turning point for your student, then use it, right? So also really important to realize that. And this is the beauty, I think, in Japan, when we see these different Japanese teachings. In Shintoism, there's Buddhism. In Buddhism, there's Shintoism. And it's really fantastic to see this overlapping thing. But here in the West, we go, no, it, it has to be like this, and we can't add this in because that is not my tradition, or this is not how it should be. But in Japan, these real teachers, they don't care. All they care about is that you have a direct experience of your own true gyo. This is the most important element. And this is, I think, what is so important uh, as a teacher and as a practitioner to find your own gyo. So don't get too caught up in lineage. Find your own gyo practice. Find a good teacher who is willing to help you, to support you, ultimately over time, one-on-one, -on -one, who is willing to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, a group is great, and we have to also practice in groups, very important, but then at the same time, we work with the person one-on-one, -on -one because that particular person is different than the person who is sitting next to you. One person, again, might be very visual, some might be very auditory, some very kinesthetic. We all work in a different way. So one way is not better than the other. Now, some people say, oh, when we have a mountain, all roads to lead to the top of the mountain. But that is not true. There's many roads what are just circling the mountain and you never go to the top. So you have to be very careful what road you take because else we just keep circling around the mountain for years and years and years. And maybe you go a little bit up the mountain and then you go back down again because the teacher, him or herself, has never gone up to the top and therefore finds it very difficult to help you to find your road to the mountain, right? If I say, if I'm as a teacher, and I say, okay, let's go all run directly up to the top, and I take a person who is not being able to do that, then we will not succeed. The person will fall off the mountain or slide off the mountain. That person actually might need to slowly do the walk around the top like this. So as a teacher, the teacher has to have explored the whole mountain, all the different roads, so that when they start off at the bottom of the mountain, the teacher A is not just leading the student around the mountain and around and around and around and nothing is happening, right? And this is why so many people are looking for other courses or other elements to add in because they feel, well, where is it taking me? Nowhere. And then the teacher has to have walked these different paths so that when he holds a hand together with the student, he or she realizes, oh, with the student we go slowly, step by step. With this person we can do the zigzag road. With this person we can go slowly, then the zigzag road. With this person we can go straight to the top. But the teacher needs to have the insight and the student has to be having the willingness to communicate with the, with the teacher. Oh, are we still going okay? Oh, I'm tired. I mean, this hurts. You know, this really good communication, a really intimate relationship 
and I use the word intimate, not as a sex or a relationship, but intimate as really, really good friends that we can be open and communicate that, oh, we say, oh, this is a little bit dangerous. Oh, that doesn't look good for me. Can we go the other way? Then the teacher knows, okay, we go the other way. And that is fine too. No judgments needed. And this is the most important element as a teacher. So again, don't get caught up in the whole linear child here, but really focus on A, your personal practice, B, your personal practice, C, your personal practice. <laughs> what you have created with your teacher. And if it's a good teacher, he or she will help you to maybe practice differently than another student of this teacher, depending on their spiritual development. And this is really important. So keep practicing, keep exploring, and don't get too caught up in all of that. Most important is the direct experience of your true self, true different practices, whatever they might be. And so here we go. I'm gonna drink the rest of my tea. Hope you have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. I'm going to vacuum. Indeed, we have to do these things too. And I'm going to teach this afternoon and this weekend. So sayonara and see you soon. Bye.